Over the past two years, you and I have spent a ridiculous amount of time focusing on 48 volt mild hybrid systems. Now, yes, this technology technically comes from jets, and no, it is not some sort of Swedish marketing campaign. Instead, it's a propulsion system that shows up in Mercedes Benz, BMWs, and Land Rovers. Now, truth be told, it's Mercedes that's been using it in a lot of cars. BMW, I think they only have it in two. Land Rover, currently only one, but I have good news from the front. There is now one more on offer. Let's kick things off with the headline, and that would be Land Rover pilfering the 48 volt mild hybrid system from the new Defender and shoehorning it into the updated Discovery. Now, what does that mean to you and I? Well, this system is a three liter turbocharged six cylinder engine with an integrated starter generator motor. Now, unlike the Mercedes system, that integrated starter generator motor does not sit between the transmission and the engine. Instead, this system does have an accessory drive, and that's where the integrated starter generator motor resides. But what does it do? Well, a couple of things. Number one, it provides some assist from a standing start, which translates to 355 horsepower and 369 pound-feet of torque. Now, there is another trick the system can do, and that is to enable the vehicle to coast from higher speeds. The idea there is to improve the fuel economy. Now, this is a large vehicle that can package a lot of people and a lot of dogs, so the fuel economy economy is not like a Prius, but it's not horrific, 18, 24, 21 combined. Now performance figures, there it's not like an SVR Range Rover or an AMG because the system is not tuned like that. 0 to 60, 6.2 seconds, VMAX 130 miles an hour. Now I can say with some certainty that I do not know a single person that would be under the delusion that a Land Rover or a Range Rover would be lightweight. They are what they are, 5,160 pounds, or depending on the express your weights and measures, 2,341 kilograms. Now, two rather pertinent pieces of information. Number one, if this was the smaller engine with only five seats, it would be significantly lighter. It'd be 400 pounds lighter. And then there's the obvious question. It is five pounds lighter than a Defender with that. Oh yeah, there's a delay there, but these really aren't about acceleration. Wow, it goes all the way to 6,500 RPM. That I did not expect from a mild hybrid six-cylinder engine. It delivers power very similar to the Defender we've driven. I don't know if it's the insulation of the vehicle, the way this thing is set up. I don't hear the engine as much here as I did in the Defender. The Defender, it almost sounds like a diesel when you're driving it because of the way the fuel delivery system works and the higher compression. Here, it does feel a little bit more rough than say like a BMW six cylinder. It's not good or bad, it's just different. Then there's the transmission, and that's the eight speed you and I have experienced in other Land Rovers. And here it is indeed very well matched to this propulsion system. There's only one area, really I should say two areas, where it lets the whole package down. Let's say for the sake of discussion, one is trying to drive aggressively in town or trying to do a passing maneuver. The downshift, it takes a really long time to get that downshift and thus the extra power. But then getting back to the whole propulsion system, the transmission, the engine, and the mild hybrid system together. Here you can tell it's a bit sharper. Perhaps the best British term would be sprightly in its performance. Now why exactly is that? Well, that's how the system was designed. It's not just to improve fuel economy or lower the amount of moving parts behind the engine. God, that traction control system is really interrupting here. Anyway, back to what I was saying. It's designed to provide torque at lower RPMs, more usable torque, so it's providing electric assist, what the electric motor is good at when the vehicle, a 5,000 pound vehicle, is trying to accelerate, either in situations like this or from a standing start. Driving dynamics, at least on-road driving dynamics, presents an unusual question here. Yeah, it's kind of an iconic vehicle for Land Rover, but there's another one that's more iconic. So what's the difference? The biggest being the wheelbase. Uh, this is four inches shorter in wheelbase than the Defender. Now, what does that mean in terms of on-road driving dynamics? Well, this, in terms of ride quality, I would argue it's not a huge difference, 
But when pushing it, say, on the freeway, where it's not a perfect freeway like LA freeways, or pushing it kind of up here, you notice the difference in the length of the vehicle, that it's shorter. It's a bit more choppy in its ride quality, say, compared to the Defender. Is it a huge difference? No, but that's something inherent to the size of the vehicle. In terms of control over the ride quality, meaning it's got the same system underneath as the Defender has. As a matter of fact, if I were to put these two things up in the air and you weren't to see the length, meaning just the rear end, it's almost identical. So a lot of the bits are the same and as such, it feels the same way. The personality, the way the car drives feels the same way. Now being it has the same hardware underneath, one would not be surprised to learn it has the same software controlling set hardware, which means it has a number of different off-road modes, something Land Rover, that's kind of their stock in trade. Yes, it is indeed that time again to play your favorite game on the Absence Game with today's contestant, one of our favorite internal combustion engine technologies just placed in a new carrying case. Well, not entirely new, something that's been updated. The Discovery, this one, the R Dynamic S, four base price of $61,900. Now, I do feel it prudent to point out if this were a four cylinder with five seats, the most basic car, $53,900. Now, let's press on to the color, Lantau Bronze which is not expensive, $710. It's good with the contrasting ebony black, which I can't believe I'm saying I like a black interior. But more importantly, what's going on here, Jaguar and Land Rover, they have been on fire in terms of color and trim and tactile feel. Like that neoprene material we saw in the Defender, that makes its way here on some of the dash as well as the shifter. Incredibly nice detail as well as some other tactile feel improvements that really change the interior. However, we do need to press on to some other details and that is one you have to pay for and that is the black contrast roof. $1,000 works well with the Lentail Bronze. Uh, then we press on to the 21 inch style 5025 gloss black wheels. I don't know if I'd want gloss black wheels on something that is a baby buggy for around town, but $2,000. 18 way heated captain's chairs. These are a very nice touch, but optional on a $62,000 vehicle, I don't know, $1,850. Then the Meridian sound system. I've told you guys this it's kind of a bargain in the OEM upgraded stereo system world. This one and the Harman Kardon and the BMWs. This one's a bit more than Harman Kardon at 1250. The Harman Kardon's 875 in BMWs. Then my absolute favorite option, the head-up display, $970. And the tow hitch receiver, something that one would need here. I'm a little puzzled that it's optional on a vehicle that I think people would buy to tow, $675. Then the LED daytime running lights are optional on a $62,000 vehicle, $400 can fix that. Then the electric third row seat, something very important here because it flattens out the bottom of the vehicle. It's not entirely flat in the cargo floor. Maybe they could work on that. Either way, that is an additional $300. Then the auto high beam, that is optional, $250. Then the only other thing we have to add is the destination handling from not the Midlands, rather Nitra or Nitra, Slovakia, uh, and surely going for my pronunciation here, $1,350 for a total retail price of $73,255. Or put another way, about exactly the same price as the Pangea Green Defender you and I drove a couple of months ago. I will admit I am one of those people that scratches their head and wonders why does the Discovery and the Defender exist side by side in 2021. Yes, back in like the mid 90s, they were two very different vehicles that had very different architecture and could do very different things. But today, as we've learned, they share a lot of the same hardware, even the same engine. So what gives? Well, now that I've spent some time in both, I'm willing to take a stab in the dark. The Defender, much more about design. I'm glad you saw that one coming. However, this, much more about packaging and not the obvious packaging of the cargo in the rear. Yeah, it's got a flatter load floor and does a much better job at packaging the second and third row seats. So there's more usable space. Forget about the cubic feet. There's more usable space of packaging in the rear. But far more unique than that is the packaging in the front and the center of the vehicle. Like for example, these things, they gotta have cup holders. I'm sure we can go through and count, but I don't want to bore you. 
However, the main cup holders, the ones here, yeah, they're under this little panel here. But look at the size of that console. That is bigger than most Prius you see on the road. So one would think that's a lot of wasted storage space. You would be wrong because one can move the cup holders out of the way and it goes all the way to the floor. But wait, there's more. There is storage here, but it's not just this thing here. There's storage all the way down here, which I've got my notebook and my phone back there. But again, wait, there's more. Not one, but two glove boxes here. And then you think we're done, right? Well, actually, we got to get into the James Bond cool storage, like Q type facility thing here. And that is here. Opens up and one can store, I don't know, your phone. There isn't Qi wireless charger here, it's here, but still really unique the way they have the storage behind something that frankly didn't need to take up that much space. And that brings us to the update of the UX, which we've experienced first in the Defender and then in that Jaguar. And even though you may laugh at me about this, I am going to say it. Jaguar Land Rover, they are on fire when it comes to UX design and not just because of this packaging. Things like the bigger screen. Everybody's going big screen, but notice this isn't tacked on. This is like an iPad sized screen that is concave, which makes it easier to see and easier to manipulate. Then we get into the UX controls down here, which you would think are all about the HVAC system. Yes, they are about the HVAC system, but they have dual function. So it's fan speed, temperature speed, even the heated and cooled seat, all by the one rotary knob. And then building upon that, they've adapted this UX system for this specific application by adding two knobs. Now, it doesn't sound very sexy, but follow me for a minute. There is a volume control knob. Remember those volume control knob? In front of the shifter, probably one of the best places for it. It's ideally where your hand is gonna fall. And then to control all the modes we discussed earlier, that is a knob that can go in and out of the console so you can hide it away when you're not using it. But notice, I'm using this here and I can see the modes in the binnacle here. I don't have to look over here because remember the problem we learned with Dave Coleman at Mazda. Where your finger goes, that's where your eyes go. Perhaps I should put this in a bit of a different light. Maybe other car manufacturers should be pilfering some of these ideas, not because of design or execution, but because of safety. So I have debated with Kumo on how to convey the following facts to you fine people without getting murdered in 2021, but here goes nothing. Now that I've spent a good amount of time with this, as well as the Defender, I better understand the differentiation. And the reality is, this is a parent's car. This is what mommies drive. When I drive around LA and I see these things floating around, there's always mommies driving these things. Where Defenders, yeah, I see a lot of mommies driving those, even the new ones. However, I have many personal friends that have Ferraris, that have 911s, that have classic cars, that have cheerfully written a check for a new Defender. So here's where I'm going on a limb. I'm thinking this is more the parent mommy car and the Defender is more the dude's car. And yeah, it has something to do with design, but also what that name conveys. Which brings us to the wish list here. And I don't have much to add because it's already 48 volt. I'd like to see the system do a bit more because it's kind of hampered being that it has an accessory drive. How about we get rid of that accessory drive to really get the benefit of a 48 volt mild hybrid system and do something about that downshifting, change the programming logic, something. Because overall, this is a fantastic vehicle to drive around town. I would just want my carrying case to look like a Defender. And this is the point of the episode where I turn this around to you guys to opine in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV All One Word, Moto Man TV All One Word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And with that, I am very happy to report that the very next Land Rover you and I will be driving will indeed be a Defender, but one with two less doors. Until I see you in the next episode, bis später.